In the previous session, we learned the methods to calculate the effective plant width for T beam and L beam. For an analysis problem for a given section, we must calculate the neutral axis depth first. Once we know the neutral axis depth, we can compute the ultimate moment of resistance for the given section. This session is on the analysis of flange beam. Consider a singly reinforced T beam with effective flange width PF, depth of flange as DF. This depth of flange will be equal to the slab thickness. BW is the width of the web. At the ultimate limit state of collapse, there can be two possible positions for the neutral axis. The first possibility is that the neutral axis may lie in the flange, or you can say that the depth of flange is greater than equal to neutral axis depth XU. In the second possibility, the neutral axis may lie in the web, that is the depth of flange DF is lesser than neutral axis depth XU. Let us now see what will be the ultimate moment of resistance of flanged beam with different possible positions of the neutral axis. In this case, the neutral axis lies within the flange. So the depth of flange is greater than or equal to the depth of the neutral axis. That is, DF is greater than or equal to XU. This condition is shown here. We know that in a beam section, the portion below the neutral axis will be in tension and the portion above will be in compression. In our present case, this part of flange will be in compression. Here, not only the concrete in the web, but some portion of concrete in the flange coming below the neutral axis will also be in tension. We know that the concrete, which is in tension below the neutral axis, does not have any role to play in the analysis. Thus, the flange section will in effect become a rectangular section of width, effective width of flange as DF and effective depth D. We can see that the concrete stress block is completely within the flange. For clarity on the view, here is the 3D view of the concrete stress block in compression when neutral axis lies within the flange. The resultant compression force will be C equal to average stress 0.36 FCK times this shaded area BF times XU which is in compression. If we consider yielding of reinforcement, tension force T that will develop in reinforcing bar will be 0.87 FY times area of tension steel. To compute neutral axis depth, equate C and T. This internal compression C and tension force T is separated by a distance Z, which is the lever arm. And this equals to D minus 0.42 times XU. Next, we can compute the ultimate moment of resistance by either taking C times liver arm or T times liver arm. The formula obtained applies to L beam also. Before we get into the second possibility, let us recollect that concrete stress block comprises of a rectangular part and a parabolic part. The rectangular portion extends up to a distance of 3 by 7 times neutral axis depth XU from the top. We had derived this value when we discussed the stress block parameter in one of the videos. The second possibility in which the neutral axis lies in the web, that is depth of flange is less than neutral axis depth XU can have further two more cases. The first one is when the depth of flange DF is less than equal to three by seven times XU that is the entire flange portion will be under the compression from a rectangular stress block. That is the flange is subjected to the constant stress of 0.45 FCK. 
a 3D view of the stress block of this case is shown here for clarity. And here you can see that the entire effective flange width is subjected to a rectangular stress block. The second case is when the depth of flange DF is greater than 3 by 7 times XU. That is, rectangular portion acts only on a small portion at the top of the flange. In the figure here, you can see that the depth of flange is greater than 3 by 7 times XU, meaning that a portion at the top of the flange will be experiencing uniform compressive stress while the remaining portion at the bottom of the flange will be experiencing non-uniform compressive stress. A 3D view of the stress block of this case is also shown here for clarity. We will consider the case related to the situation in which two conditions are satisfied. The neutral axis lies in the web indicated by the relation depth of flange is less than neutral axis depth xu and the depth of rectangular stress block is uh, 3 by 7 xu and uh, this 3 by 7 xu is uh, greater than the depth of flange and this is indicated by the relation that is depth of flange is less than or equal to 3 by 7 times neutral axis depth xu for analyzing this case, the single reinforced flange beam is split into two parts. That is, one is the web portion and the other is the flange portion. The web part is a single reinforced rectangular section and by now we all are familiar that resultant ultimate compressive force will be given as average stress 0.36 FCK times area of concrete in compression which is this portion given by width of web BW times neutral axis depth XU. Thus compression force in the web portion is CUW equal to 0.36 FCK BW into XU. There will also be a tensile force acting on the part tension reinforcement here given by TUW. The overhang flange portion as shown here is subjected to a constant stress of 0.45 times FCK and this will act on the flange area shown here and uh, this area will be effective width of flange BF minus width of web BW which has to be multiplied with the depth of flange that is compression force in flange part CUF will be 0 0.45 FCK into width of flange minus width of web hole multiplied by depth of flange. There is a tension force uh, TUF which will also act on uh, the reinforcement. A 3D view of the stress block of this case is shown here. Now here you can see that the complete stress block is acting on the web portion while the overhanging flange is subjected to a rectangular part of stress block having constant stress of 0.45 times FCK. The total compression force will be sum of compression force from the web and compression force from the flange portion. Now assuming tension reinforcement to yield we can get the resultant tensile force on reinforcement as T equal to 0.87 Fy times area of tension steel. In order to compute neutral axis depth, we can equate this total compression force C in concrete with the tension force T acting in the reinforcing bar. For Computing the ultimate moment of resistance will sum up the moment of resistance from the web portion and the flange portion. In the web portion, we have a lever arm of D minus 0.42 times XU, and here in this flange portion, we have a lever arm of D minus 0.5 times depth of flange. 
So the ultimate moment of resistance will be the sum of moment of resistance from the web portion and the moment of resistance from the flange portion, which we can get as CUW times liver arm D minus 0.42 XU plus CUF times liver arm D minus 0.5 times depth of flange. Here, whatever formula we get is applicable to L beams also. Let us now consider the case related to the situation in which these two conditions are satisfied. The neutral axis lies in the web, that is, it is indicated by the relation depth of flange is less than uh, the neutral axis depth XU, and the depth of the rectangular stress block is less than the depth of flange which is indicated by the relation that uh, the depth of flange is greater than 3 by 7 times the neutral axis depth xc for analyzing this case the singly reinforced flange beam is split into web portion and the flange portion the web part is a singly reinforced rectangular section and for this the resultant ultimate compressive force for this portion will be given as average stress 0.36 FCK times area of concrete and compression which is this portion given by width of web BW times XU. Thus compression force in the web portion is CUW equals 0.36 FCK BW XU. There will also be a tensile force acting on the part tension reinforcement as shown. Let us see the compressive force in the flange. We have to get a good understanding of how the stress block is acting on this flange region. We can see that the rectangular block is completely acting on the flange. The force from this portion can be calculated easily. But when we look at the parabolic portion, only a portion of it is only a portion of it in the form of truncated parabola is acting on the flange. This can also be observed in the 3D view for better understanding. The point of application and uh, computation will become very tiring and will not result in general expression if we adopt this stress block variation in the flange. So code IS456-2000 allows reduction of stress in the overhang slab portion as uniform stress which can be seen here in a 3D representation. This uniform stress has value of 0.45 FCK acting on the reduced depth of flange YF which is given in clause number G2.2.1. Now to get compression force in flange portion, this uniform stress 0.45 FCK is multiplied with area given by effective width of flange minus width of web, which is multiplied with uh, this reduced depth of flange wire. That is compression force in flange CUF will be 0.45 FCK into difference between width of flange and width of web it's multiplied with the reduced depth of flange YF. There is also tension force TUF which will act on part of reinforcement as shown. The total compression force will be the sum of compression force from the web CUW and compression force from the flange portion CUF. Assuming tension reinforcement to yield we get the resultant tensile force or reinforcement as T equal to 0.87 Fy times area of tension steel. In order to compute neutral axis depth, equate total compression C in concrete with the tension force T in the reinforcing bar. Now to compute the ultimate moment of resistance, we will sum up the moment of resistance 
from the web portion and the flange portion. In the web portion, we have a lever arm of D minus 0.42 times XU. And uh, in this case of flange portion, we have a lever arm of D minus 0.5 times reduced depth of flange wire. So the ultimate moment of resistance now it becomes sum of moment of resistance by web portion which is given as CUW times liver arm D minus 0.42 XU and moment of resistance because of the flange part which is CUF times liver arm D minus 0.5 YF. These formulas whatever we obtain can be applied to L-beam also.